Hey what's up, Merite here, and in this video we're gonna take a look at the main fascia covering the head and neck. But first, if I would ask you what is a fascia and how do we categorize them, would you be able to answer? Because these are important things to understand before you actually learn about the different fascias we have in the body. So a fascia is just a connective tissue surrounding structures within the body. So here's the muscle, just a raw muscle within our body, and here's the fascia. It surrounds the muscle. Now why do we need them? Well, one thing is that the fascia stabilizes and separates the muscles from other internal organs. Fascia form compartments that separate structures within an area of the body. Especially in clinics, if you get patients with edema within the compartment that the fascia forms, we'll get the so-called compartment syndrome, which could be very dangerous as blood supply may get cut off due to the pressure. Fascia also forms a passage for nerves, blood vessels and lymph. And this is also important to keep in mind, especially in people with chronic neck pain who are on constant pain medication. It doesn't necessarily have to be your muscles that's ill, it could be the fascia. So stretching exercises are important factors which can stretch the fascia and help loosen it up. Fascia also functions as a storage medium for fat and water. And lastly, there are three types of fascia that you need to know. There is the superficial fascia, the deep fascia and the visceral fascia. Okay, so here's the skin without removing any layers. If you remove just the layers of the skin, you will see a superficial fascia located right underneath the skin. And then when you remove the superficial fascia, you will see the deep fascia. The deep fascia is actually the one that surrounds individual muscles and group of muscles to separate them into compartments. And when we talk about fascia within the body, it's most often the deep fascia we're talking about. So when you remove the deep fascia and enough muscles and bones to see an organ, we will see the visceral fascia that surrounds the organs within our body. And here we see the fascia covering the lungs called the pleura. So that is the three types of fascia we have. And if you go back here, this fascia I showed you earlier was a deep fascia. All right, so finally, in this video, we're first going to look at the fascia in the head, which consists of the temporal fascia, the parotid fascia, the masseteric fascia and the buccopharyngeal fascia. Then after that, we will cover the fascia of the neck, which is called the cervical fascia. And the cervical fascia is divided into three main layers. The superficial layer is located under the platysma, the pretracheal layer covering the infrahyoid muscles and is connected to the superficial layer, and then the prevertebral layer covering the deep neck muscles. So these are the main fascia we're going to talk about in this video. But we will add a few other things throughout this video in order to gain the complete picture. Awesome. We will start with the first one in the list, which is the temporal fascia. So the temporal fascia lies on top of the temporal muscle. So here's the temporal muscle, here's the temporal fascia. It starts at the superior temporal line, which is here, that's the cranial attachment point, and then it goes down towards the zygomatic arch to attach there. But this fascia actually divides into two layers just above the zygomatic arch. When it splits, we call them the deep layer and the superficial layer. So if we make a vertical section like this and cut the face and look at the fascia from this direction, we will see this. So what do we see here? Here highlighted is a temporal muscle. That means this fascia is the temporal fascia. Notice that the temporal fascia splits into a deep and the superficial layer before it inserts at the zygomatic arch. And between the deep and the superficial layer, there's usually going to be fat tissue as you see here. So that was the temporal fascia. Next, we have the parotid fascia and the masseteric fascia. We will do these two together because the parotid fascia partially fuses with the masseteric fascia. So the parotid fascia covers the parotid gland. So here's the parotid gland which produces saliva. The masseteric fascia covers the masseted muscle, which is this one. So here are the two fascias covering the parotid gland and the masseted muscle. The parotid fascia over the parotid gland, and then anteriorly it fuses with the masseteric fascia to form the parotideo masseteric fascia, and then it continues as the masseted fascia. They both attach at the zygomatic arch, and then go down and attach at the base of the mandible. So that's these two. Then we have the buccopharyngeal fascia. So do you remember this muscle? It's called the buccinator muscle. The buccopharyngeal fascia covers the buccinator muscle, as you see here, 
and then it continues backwards. It continues back behind the pharynx. So it's a part of the posterior wall of the pharynx. And then it fuses with the pterygo mandibular ref, which is a ref or a union of the tendons of the superior pharyngeal muscles. And then it continues into the fibrous tissue of the pharynx, going down along the neck. So if we make a transverse cut of this fascia and look at it from this view, we will see this. This is a transverse section of the level of the first cervical vertebrae. So what do we see here? On the lateral sides, we see the parotid glands with the parotid fascia. We see the masseter muscle with the masseteric fascia. So this pink line is the buccopharyngeal fascia. And notice that it starts at the buccinator muscle and then go back behind the pharynx to fuse with the pterygo mandibular ref. So that was the fascia of the head. Next, let's do the fascia of the neck, which is called the cervical fascia. So here's a side view of the head and neck. If we now gently cut his neck and remove his head, and then look at the neck from this perspective, we will see this. So what do we see here? We see the skin on the outside, which has the superficial fascia just beneath the skin. Remember we talked about that earlier? The whole body is covered with the superficial fascia just below the skin. Then below the skin anteriorly, we can see the platysma. And here we see the trachea for the airways and the esophagus going down from the pharynx to the stomach. In front of the trachea, we can see the thyroid gland and back here we see the vertebrae. So this is the anterior part and here is the posterior part. So I hope you kind of get an idea of what we're looking at. The cervical fascia is the main fascia of the neck and it consists of several layers. We first have the superficial layer, which is highlighted here in blue. It covers the surface of the neck, as you see here, and it envelops the two large craniothoracal muscles, the Stanocleidomasteodeus and the trapezius, as you see here. And keep in mind that the platysma is superficial to the superficial layer of the cervical fascia. Another layer of the cervical fascia is the pretracheal layer, which is highlighted here in green. The pretracheal layer envelops the infrahyoid muscles, as you see here. Remember, these are the muscles like the sternohyoid, sternothyroid, and the thyrohyoid. So it covers the infrahyoid muscles, and then it continues backwards to form the carotid sheath, as you see here, called the vagina carotica, which surrounds the large neurovascular bundles we have on either side of the neck, which are the common carotid artery, internal jugular vein, and nervus vagus. Another layer of the cervical fascia is the prevertebral layer, which is this large layer you see here. It covers the deep cervical muscles like the longus culli and the longus capitis. So those are the three layers of the cervical fascia. But what other fascia can we see from this view? We can see the buccopharyngeal fascia, which we talked about earlier. Remember, it fuses with the pterygo mandibular ref behind the pharynx and then continues down into the neck. So here it is. And then between the carotid sheath, you will find the fascia connecting these two called the intercarotid fascia or also known as the alar fascia. These two layers are going to form potential spaces in our neck that is considered clinically relevant. Between the buccopharyngeal fascia and the alar fascia, this space is called the retropharyngeal space and is used as a surgical approach to the cervical vertebral column. Behind the retropharyngeal space is the alar space or the danger space which is sometimes classified as a part of the retropharyngeal space. Okay, so between the lungs, there's going to be an area called the mediastinum, which contains a lot of vasculatures and nerves and organs like the heart and the thymus. The alar space continues down into the mediastinum. Sometimes, when there's a heavy infection in the oral cavity, especially if the person is immune compromised, the infection may spread from the mouth into the retropharyngeal area. The problem now is that if this infection reaches a danger space, some potential life-threatening complications may happen. A person can get airway obstruction, for example, if a lot of pus accumulates in the danger space and blocks the airways, or the infection can now easily go down into the mediastinum and cause mediastinitis. Alright, another space we can see here is the parapharyngeal space, which is a space located lateral to the pharynx lying around where the carotid sheath is. So that was all I had for the fascia of the head and neck, and I hope that was helpful.